Hello, this is a demonstration of several features of the BASIS 3 board working together to produce an output on the seven segment display. Uh, here on the BASIS 3 board we have a microcontroller close to the USB port here which emulates a PS2 keyboard mouse uh, driver and that kind of harkens back to the old days of um, USB keyboards and mouses that use the um, PS2 connections instead of the USB connection. So it has essentially uh, got two modes on that microcontroller right here. Um, one of them is human interface device as a host, and then the other one is so that you can plug a thumb drive into that USB port and uh, switch the uh, program mode jumper here on the Basis 3 and program your FPGA through that port. The um, the Xilinx software, uh, Vivado, does not expose any uh, controls for the human interface device there, so those are baked in. Uh, so if you don't like the way it negotiates a port, which is for USB devices, is called enumeration. If you don't like the way it does that, you can't do anything about it. All you can really do is access the output um, from a USB device that it converts into PS2 protocol scan codes. And so my um, project here takes those scan codes that's output by this little microcontroller here, and it processes those scan codes, uh, waiting for the clock to go high and waiting for it to go low. And then if it wants to communicate on that port, it can actually pull the clock low, although I don't think they baked in that feature uh, on the basis 3. So really, you can only read from that, as far as I can tell. And what I've done is I've read those scan codes and converted them to ASCII codes, which correspond to the ASCII code table for all the characters on a keyboard. And so I'm going to show you um, a couple of those modules um, playing nicely together here. Uh, as you can see, the um, human interface device port here is kind of a, doing a steady uh, pulse right now that's kind of sort of a sleep mode but you can uh, wake it up and you'll see that orange light go away and then it'll be ready to start reading commands uh, scan codes from the keyboard so I'm just gonna press the shift key to wake that up it's awake now and I'm gonna start running through some keys and showing you the uh, ASCII scan codes for those so the ASCII scan code for the uh, A key is 61 uh, for S it's 73 and it goes to sleep occasionally, so you kind of have to rewake it back up. Scan code for D is 64, 66 for F, 67 for G, 68 for H, uh, 6A for J. So you can tell that these are hexadecimal codes. They are in 8-bit uh, hexadecimal scan code, and they correspond to the ASCII uh, character table. And um, I'll show you the uh, numbers up here. Uh, number 1 is 31, and it just steps all the way through to number nine on a standard keyboard and um, that's, that's about all you got here zero is three zero one is thirty one thirty two and so on all the way down there and there's just some of your standard characters here and here I've got a few pulled up that do show the kind of hexadecimal representation there because you've got 5d for the uh, for the bracket keys here the square bracket keys 5b and 5d for those square brackets accordingly there. And that's it. Basically, uh, you've got the, um, you got the Verilog code to interpret uh, scan codes that come from a keyboard. Uh, it's actually not coming directly from the keyboard. As I mentioned earlier, it's going through this microcontroller, which is converting the scan codes, PS2 protocol scan codes, into, uh, well, it's com converting the uh, kind of low-level USB enumeration uh, data into PS2 scan codes so that you can take a modern keyboard and still be able to communicate it with the, with the BASIS 3 because as I mentioned it does not give you much control over the human interface device um, and how that's set up. The, so the code for that is hard baked into this microcontroller and as far as I can find on any of the documentation you can't change that. They, they kind of hide that from you like they do a bunch of other things in Xilinx so you can really only just uh, program your FPGA and that's, that's about all you can do um, other than creating a memory configuration profile, and I think that has to do um, <clears throat> more with storing, uh, you know, the default program that comes on this thing when you first turn it on. I think you can replace that with something else so that every time it boots up, it's not the demo code that's uh, running on the basis three, but some code of your choosing, some bitstream of your choosing. It'll basically store that on there, if I'm not mistaken. And so 
basically that's all you get. Um, and then again, there's the seven segment display. Uh, and what's interesting I'll mention on that before I wrap up the video here is that the seven segment display, you cannot output all of these digits at the same time. Uh, in the code, you actually have to write some code so that it's on a timer and these are actually blinking really, really fast. Uh, how that works is, is it disables all the digits and it updates the first one. Disables all the digits and then updates the second one. Disables all third, disables all fourth. So it's actually scanning left to right through these, but it's doing it so fast, it looks like all of these are on uh, at the same time. So, and, and that's really interesting code. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll post that um, available for any of you curious about this project out there and want to dig through the code and see how that works. I'll post it in the, uh, in, um, in the links in the description below. Uh, thank you very much.